What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So my uh, wife was driving on the interstate the other day and a rock either fell off a truck or got kicked up off the roadway. And what it did, as you can see here, it cracked the mirror cover and cracked her turn signal indicator in half. Uh, turn signal indicator does not work anymore. And the mirror cap, actually, if you see here, it comes off. It broke some shit inside too. So that needs a place. Uh, figured I'd take this time to figure out how to do this and then show someone how to do this. That way they don't potentially break anything further than they already have if they're replacing one of these pieces. Or if they need to get the mirror off to replace the mirror glass, they know how to do that too. So I'll show you what I bought to do this repair and where I got it from. And we'll start tearing the mirror apart and go from there. All right, so I ordered my brand new parts from AccuratePartsWarehouse.com. Uh, it was about $85 for the replacement mirror, which is the cover and all the other plastic trim that's included with the mirror and the turn signal indicator. All OEM, all original, all brand new. Now, um, what I've noticed is in order to get the light put in place, these two pieces have to be separate, which means I'm gonna have to take these apart on the car as well. In order to get the cap put on, it also gets screwed on to the light right here. So all these pieces are gonna end up coming together at some point before the mirror is put back together. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over to the car, go ahead and get that mirror taken apart, get the screws, reassemble this, and then throw it on the car. The only three tools we'll need for this project are a plastic, preferably pry bar, or trim panel removal with a sharp pointed tip, a long Phillips head screwdriver, and a ratcheting screwdriver with a Phillips head bit. Before you can do anything, you have to get the mirrored glass off the car. In order to do that, you have to disengage these clips along the bottom here, these side clips, these two J-hooks, and this sticky backing that's on the actual bracket. Now, the easiest way to get this mirror off, when it is engaged in the J-hooks up top, you're gonna wanna push the mirror all the way inward at the top to expose a gap at the bottom here. With that gap open and displayed, you'll take either a flathead screwdriver or preferably a plastic pry tool like the one seen here. And you're gonna slip it up inside in between this point right here on the black and this point right here on the white backing on both sides. You'll slip in, pry outward, and this will disengage that clip right there. Do the same thing on the other side and this whole bottom will disconnect from itself, leaving this clip, this clip, and these two J-hooks holding the mirror in place with the, with the sticky backing. Once it's disengaged at the bottom, grab evenly on both sides, hold it and stabilize it, and then slowly pull outward. You'll feel the clip disengage on both sides and you'll hear the little square of tape start to peel away. Once that tape peels away, pull down and out, and that will pull the J-hooks out of their hook points at the top of the bracket. After that, all you're gonna have left holding the mirror in are these two wires that go to the mirror defrost. Now these wires are both black with white stripes, but the wire closest to the car door is gonna have little gray hashes on it. That wire is what plugs into the pin closest to the car door. The one without the gray hash marks goes onto the pin furthest from the car door. Once those are gently pulled off, the mirror glass will come off, exposing your four screw points that you need to remove to get the backing of the cover off. Now, there's one more screw on the housing and it is right under here. So you have to rotate this just enough to feel the screw. So now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my screwdriver and take this bottom screw out right here. All right, with all the screws removed, now I should be able to just gently pull on this plastic cap, removing it from the car. There's my broken reflector. Gonna unplug it from right here. And then the other reflector is hooked around the pin on the bottom bracket here. So I gotta separate these two front and back plates. With that screw taken out, that should be fairly easy. All right, so using the pry tool once again, if you get up underneath, there is a clip right uh, there. Pry this apart right here. This will disengage, and this bottom portion will just rotate outward and then release itself from the clip on this side here. You can now see where the lens actually bolts down. So I'll go back over to the table, put this back together with the screws provided, and then come back over and put it back on the car.
the uh, cap and the bottom have to go together because these two small silver screws hold them both together. You cannot access this screw once the mirror cap is put on because of the bracket. So this all has to be assembled together outside of the car. And then this whole piece gets slipped back on to the front face. And then these screws here, here, and here come in from the back side of the mirror glass. And there's the final product with everything looking good, brand new, everything functions, and the mirror is done. So uh, if you are out of warranty or you just, you know, you messed it up on your own and it's uh, you're at fault, about $90 in parts, and you can swap it out yourself in about 30 to 40 minutes. Not too hard. NBX, RDX, and TSX should all be the same. So yeah. There you go. If you're enjoying the content, be sure to keep following along. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you on the next one.